Martin was born on a Sunday night, about 5.30. And all I knew at that time was that I had had a son, and that was all. Monday, when my obstetrician came to see me in the morning, he said, I suggest, I think something is wrong with the baby's eyes, or, and I'm sure it's not very you know, serious, but I think you ought to have an ophthalmologist come in to see more. Tuesday night, midnight, an ophthalmologist came, and he took me inside to a separate room, and he told me that Martin had no eyes at all. Very blunt, I mean, never softened the blow at all. He said, I don't believe it, and this is what I'm telling you. And he left, and I was left alone. One single word can be a seed in the mind of another human being. It can grow into an attitude or action that can shape a life. What is the reaction to being told your child is defective? This documentary deals with these unknowns. Perhaps you will see something or hear something that may one day create a viable solution for a yet unborn child and its parents. This presentation may be a seed. It is the story of Martin a profoundly reparted blind boy. The story of his first three years of life. When Martin was seven weeks old, periodic developmental examinations were begun. In this first examination, he quieted in response to auditory stimulation. When supported upright and stimulated by contact on his feet, he made stepping motions. All expected behavior in the four to eight week old infant. Here, he raises his head from the prone position to the midline which is age appropriate. But this behavior did not persist. At 18 weeks, head lifting to the midline was no longer present. At 18 weeks, Martin again quiets to sound and seems to differentiate them, for he now smiles to the whistle and fusses with other sounds. His head lags when pulled to the sitting position. Once there, he holds his head erect, but does not seem to enjoy sitting when propped. He grasps objects and immediately places them in his mouth. He does not engage his hands in the midline as expected at this age. He no longer attempts to support his own weight in the erect position, nor does he make the stepping movements seen at seven weeks. Searching movements are limited in range. He responds only to cues of tactile stimulation. He does not search in response to auditory cues. The lags in motor development seen here are suggestive of a delay in development but were as yet inconclusive. Martin was 40 weeks old when this examination took place. He sits only momentarily without support. He plays with objects and shows appropriate anger when they are taken away. Instead of plucking at the string, Martin transfers the ring from one hand to the other, a behavior expected at 18 weeks in the sighted infant and delayed by some few weeks in the normal blind infant. In the prone position, he will tentatively search for objects. When he finds them, his whole body responds with success. Martin began to sit a few days before this 52-week-old examination was conducted. As at 18 weeks, he quiets to sound, but does not seem to localize sound, nor does he show the interest or the preferences seen at 18 weeks of age. Now, more definite suggestions of retardation are evidenced by lag in development of motor skills and atypical variations in rate of development of social adaptive functions. At one year, he functions like a five to six month old sighted infant. The motor development of a normal blind infant may be roughly parallel to the sighted child until eight to nine months of age. 
At 22 months of age, we studied Martin in his home. Martin had remained in the hospital until he was three months old. His family at first was unable to decide if they would accept him and care for him. And so I, I just felt that he, he went against me. I was afraid. I didn't know what I would have to do, how it would change our lives, and what I would, you know, could expect from Martin. And I really think it was just really fear at the beginning, that I was just afraid to take him home to start to love him and, and you know, know, not know what to expect for the future. I didn't want to change our lives that much, I suppose. If I really had a choice, I wanted everything to be as normal as everybody else's, I guess. Then I really can't tell you what I felt, although I just felt that I could never take this child home. That was my feeling, although I could tell you why. I just knew I just never wanted him in my home. I was sick. But of course, um, after I brought Martin home, I used to admonish myself for ever feeling that way, because he gave me a lot of love. I mean, I really, I got a lot from Martin that I, uh, that I just don't get from anyone else. And even today, I still feel the same way. Now Martin lives at home with his mother, his father, and his four-year-old sister, Sharon. Sharon eats breakfast by herself while her mother tends to daily household chores. One can't help but wonder how Sharon is and will be affected by Martin's role within the household. And conversely, what if any problem does Sharon present to him? She unsuccessfully attempts to involve him in a play. When left alone, he can do no more than engage himself in simple stereotyped movements. Caring for Martin is difficult. Not only is he a blind, totally dependent, retarded child, but he's oftentimes irritable. His mother has been told that if his development is to be optimal, sensory and cognitive stimulation should be frequent. Therefore, she feels an added burden of guilt when she must leave him to himself. Martin's mother has vacillated in her feelings about him, yet she speaks of rewards. And, you know, he's just such a baby, and he's so very dependent, or he was so very dependent on me for everything. I loved that, I enjoyed that. But he himself, he's just that smile, such an easy smile, you know, he's just a good type of child. He, I imagine Martin is a very good child, you know, I mean, to bring up, he, he certainly seems very easy to manage, he isn't, you know, he doesn't have any temper, or he's, he's mild-mannered, he's a good baby, he's a good child. Despite some rewards, once made aware of how severely defective he is and the grave prognosis for independent functioning, mother promptly accepted her pediatrician's advice to institutionalize her baby. We brought Martin home October 10th. He was three months old. And he was here until uh, September 15th, two years later. He was two in July and he left here September 15th. So he was home exactly two years. And then approximately May, of that year, before Martin was two, I took both children to the pediatrician for checkups. Originally he had said to me when Martin first came out of the hospital that his contention was that Martin was blind, but a perfectly normal child. Now, two years later, it was a little less than two years later, he said, uh, I want to rescind my thoughts, Rotary, he said, and have you given any thought to putting Martin in a home? And I said, no, because up to the two years, I didn't. I mean, at the beginning, yes, but after that, no. He says, well, I think you ought to consider it because I see very little change in him. He's almost two years old, and I really don't believe he's progressing normally. And how he said to me, I think he's right, and I think we ought to do something about it. And I guess after just very little thought, I, I really admit it didn't take very long, because within the next two months or so, we started making arrangements. And that's when we decided to put Martin, you know, someplace. For the past year and a half, Martin has lived in the state school for the retarded. During this time, he has shown no significant development. His mother visits regularly, but they seem to have little positive or negative effect upon his behavior. He no longer grasps at toys and seems to have lost interest in all inanimate objects. He can no longer sit unsupported. There has been no evidence of attempts to communicate by language. We began by telling you this documentary deals with unknowns. The cause of Martin's regression is uncertain. Whether due to the reactions to separation from his home and family and his subsequent return to institutionalization, 
or whether it is a continuation of the regressive trends already noted during the second half of his first year, or a combination of both, we simply do not know. At present, there is almost no hope for Martin's further development. Perhaps within you there are answers. New methods for training the profoundly retarded child, research efforts directed to the understanding of the aberrations that produce congenital defects. Maybe there is a reason for Martin, perhaps one day a discovery, stimulated by the study of the profoundly retarded, will benefit all humanity yet to come. This presentation may be a seed.